Okay, so this video is a fun yet different one. I also thought of this thumbnail that I've made for this video months ago and literally made this challenge up just so I could use it. Not worth it, I know, but little things like this keep me happy. <laughs> We're coming towards the end of the year and Christmas for me is parkrun season. Mainly because I work every Saturday for the rest of the year but at Christmas however I get a few valuable Saturday mornings off and I choose to use this time to smash myself around one of my local parks with other like-minded individuals and in this aspect it feels very similar to Zwift Racing on my indoor trainer. A fun community doing something active with like-minded individuals. Now I am going to say that this video is my shameless attempt to convert my Zwifting audience into watching some of my crit racing equivalent of running park runs and equally maybe even those of you that enjoy my running videos so my running audience into watching a few crazy fast and brutal indoor races in the form of Zwift Insider for tiny tiny races. Please don't let the name fool you. The only thing tiny about these four races is my sprint. Calling these races tiny is like naming a Rottweiler fluffy. You might think it's cute, ah! but it's still a Rottweiler. So today's video is a disgusting mongrel hybrid of smash PBs and suffering. Welcome to four races and a park run. Not in that order, because the thumbnail wouldn't work the other way around. Now before we get into the video, every indoor Zwifter knows of the Zwift Insider Tiny Race series, even if they don't choose to participate, which is probably a wise decision on their part because they're particularly brutal, they're infamous on the weekly racing calendar, appearing every Saturday like Parkrun, and like Parkrun I am normally unavailable due to family and work commitments, but not this Saturday just gone, I'm available. Okay, I'm at a park run. It, the weather forecast for today is uh, storm. The weather is yellow amber weather warning for wind and rain. And I've decided to come and do a park run. I was here not too long ago and I set a PB of just under 28 minutes. I'm absolutely frozen. I'm gonna, I need to start running and warming up. Then I'm gonna go home and race tiny races on Zwift. Now I'm gonna quickly show you the time I need to beat for this to be a PB video. The time was 27 minutes and 50 seconds, which I set only four months ago now. That video is also on my channel. If you enjoy watching this one, please go and check that one out. Now I kicked off knowing I'd probably fly off the start line. I always do this. I always go as hard as I can off the start line. I don't know why I do it. It's the adrenaline inside me. So I decided for the first time to attempt to stay behind the 25 minute pacer from the off. I've never done this before and I'm not sure why not. It seems like a very sensible thing to do, especially considering how reckless I am with my pacing. However, on hindsight, this was a huge mistake because it was massively above my own capability at this point. I attempted to stay behind the 25 minute pace for as long as I could. At the 1K mark, I noticed I was being dropped by the small group following her. If you'll notice, I'm using Zwifting terminology to try and entice you in. And I put in one big last dig, attempting to get into their draft and knowing I'd probably be dropped over the grassy, muddy sections. But it seems a solid five minute kilometer pace from the off is a little out of my reach at the moment and probably a big mistake. I also knew that if I tried to hold this pace for much longer then I'd probably blow up, ultimately resulting in a much slower finish. So I made the rational decision to slow down, which was the right decision. However, having said all that, I'm now dropped from the 25 minute kilometer pacing group and I'm out on my own. I'm starting to lose it. I'm starting to go. I pushed through down over the muddy grass. Oh, oh goodness. <sighs> up the hill back onto the pavement and it was at this point that I saw another pacing partner coming up from behind me they were wearing these bib things and I thought great the 26 minute partner to follow to the finish line 
No, it wasn't a 26 minute pacer. It was the dreaded 28 minute pacer. Somehow I missed the 26 and 27. It might have been a subliminal thing where I had just blocked it out. And I was now dropping so far back that I was being beaten by the 28 minute pacer. And they were either running faster than the 28 minute pace or I was losing time. I'm willing to bet it was me losing time. Knowing I couldn't allow this to happen, I picked up the pace and I tried to pull time back. If I was gonna beat 27 minutes and 50 seconds, in an ideal world, I'd like for my finish time to start with 26. As I pass through the familiar viaduct with a train passing over it, which is always a good omen, I got smashed in the face by a headwind and then I picked up the pace on the last section. I then sprinted for the finish line trying really hard not to barge those in front of me out of the way or accidentally trip anyone up. <laughs> I crossed the line in exactly 27 minutes and 39 seconds. A new parkrun PB by only 11 seconds. Whether you win by an inch or a mile, I was over the moon with that result. Now this new 27 minute and 39 second time is now my target for the many park runs I'm going to run over the forthcoming Christmas holidays. The best thing about Christmas holidays is I have time off so I'm able to run park runs and park run as an organisation normally put a lot more park runs on than just on Saturdays because there's Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve etc etc. But having got 50% of the job done I stripped off in the middle of the park and I got home with time to spare to get on to the tiny races however there was one small hurdle I hadn't told my family I was racing on Zwift after the park run they assumed my 5k smash fest was that day's exercise and I was now done and, and they had planned for me to have a whole day Christmas shopping with them yay now the original plan was park run 9am park run come home and then I was going to jump on the 3pm tiny races on Zwift However, I got home and my family insisted I go Christmas shopping. I couldn't really say no. I couldn't privatise Zwift. I made that decision a long time ago that I wouldn't privatise my fitness over my family. Feels like the wrong decision, but that's where I am. And uh, it's now nine o'clock or it's 10 to nine at night. So I'm about to jump on and do a quick warm up. I am absolutely up for this. I say that now. This first race, pretty much dead flat. My intention here was just to hang on to the pack and try my best for a sprint finish. Max effort 5K PB attempts, smashing myself around a park and then attempting to sprint like this. I just had people sailing past me. Having now raced one and felt like I had raced it fairly well, there were some things I'd do differently, but I say that after all my races and I'm not gonna bother going through it now because I'm doing this for fun. The 21st place didn't really feel like it reflected my effort levels in the race. However, it does go a long way to representing how absolutely brutal these races really are. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go through all of my Zwift power data as that's only interesting to me, but I end up doing my highest ever average watts per kg since starting on Zwift. A whopping 2.9 watts per kg for the entirety of this race. I'm now knocking on the door of being able to hold three watts per kg for at least seven or eight K. But the biggest thing I noticed recently as I've been racing every single day for a while now is my massive increase in endurance. I can endure bigger efforts for a lot longer without burning out. However, having said all of that, this race was my biggest opportunity for a podium and things are about to get a lot worse. And uh, yeah, we need to head on over to New York for tiny race number two of four. And this is where I really do need to think about my tactics and my bike, my bike especially. reached 
the the absolute mammoth climb here just keep going keep getting up up and up and up the less said about this race the better I made the right decision not to power up this climb and just spin up. I've got to swap my bike. I was never going to be competitive in this race, weighing 89 kg. And considering that I had just run a flat out 5k earlier in the day, I decided not to use up my last remaining match, if I had any, trying to win one or two extra positions. This turned out to be a really good decision. Park run and tiny races are not a good combination. Now race three on paper should have been made for me. Fresh into these races, I would have 100% been able to stay with the lead pack. No one is dropping me on a flattish course like this one, especially when I'm equipped with my trusty aero frame and wheel combination. However, I just didn't have anything left in my legs after a week of racing non-stop pretty much every day and then a park run this morning. Have I mentioned I ran a park run earlier in the day? I don't think I've mentioned that in this video yet, have I? Even though it's only 35 kilometers an hour, we are going up a steady 1% gradient and I keep looking at the gradient, praying, praying for it to get back to zero because I don't know if I've got much more in my legs. And then this is where the elastic snaps and it will leave us four in their wake. I'm done. Ah! They start attacking, they're going for it now. I haven't got it. I've decided against sprinting because it will just destroy me for the last race. And I thought if I do a sprint here, I probably won't be joining the next race. And that's the end of the race. I am properly disappointed with that last race. I've got nothing in my legs. Oh, guys, a park run and then a day shopping is not optimum training for tiny races. I am. Uh, I've got nothing left. The reason I'm doing this is because I find fatigue training to be some of the best training for my overall endurance. That's what I'm trying to improve. I consider myself an amateur endurance fan. I like running long distances and I want to do the same with my cycling. I know running 5k and then walking around a shopping centre for six hours and then racing on Zwift for an hour isn't exactly an Everesting level challenge. But it's great for the kind of training I enjoy doing. It keeps me entertained and most importantly, most importantly, it keeps me motivated to want to train, which I find is 90% of the battle. This is why I think park runs and tiny races are hugely comparable, because they're a lot of fun. And then in the last race, with an over-increased rolling resistance on the sand and gravel, with a big old kicker at the end, I wasn't feeling particularly optimistic. In fact, I just wanted to have a shower and go to bed. It was now coming up to 10 o'clock at night. And I'll be honest, my legs felt that like they were made of lead. I was contemplating dropping out, having completed only three races. What's the point of racing if I'm not going to be competitive? I'm done, guys. I'm done. But then I remembered why I run park runs in the first place. And for those of you that have watched my Why I Love Park Runs video, and again, I appreciate your support, you will know it's not, it's not to beat anyone in front of me, behind me, or even next to me, even though I am very competitive. No, I run them to beat myself, to beat me from yesterday. These tiny races should be no different. I started the race. I started the race, and I started the race with one aim. Stay with the lead pack for as long as possible. This is the last race. I've got nothing else I have to do after this other than just shower and bed because it's now pushing 10 o'clock at night. I thought to myself, let's go for it. Drop my steamroller and I get out the saddle.
Now I was very, very happy with how this race turned out. I was over the moon. Not only because I was very close to pulling out one of the best performances I'd had across all four races, but also because I managed to muster enough in the tank to be able to remain somewhat competitive and manage to stay with the lead pack for at least half the race. I need to return to these tiny race series again very, very soon for another attempt in the Zwift Racing Score category, category four, whatever it's called. That's if I don't get promoted soon as my other daily races are starting to produce some really good results for me where I haven't smashed myself around a park beforehand. And if I do return to make more tiny races, please let me know if that's something you're interested in because you know I enjoy racing them. I just want to say if you've enjoyed watching this video please consider subscribing and liking as that massively helps me if you saw value in it that is and thank you for watching see you in next week's video. Cheers guys. Ah. 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 <sighs> guys I am what is known in the trade as done. Oh my God, I'm as happy with the ending there. Well happy. Oh, thanks for watching. See you next week.